Well, greetings to everybody. Um, Pastor Myron Crockett here, Journey Community Church, and we are rolling with our first ever uh, drink from a fire hydrant session where we are studying scripture together over the course of just a few hours. Uh, we're going to go through a whole book of scripture together in a few hours. Um, and so we see what this is, we experience this together and do it online. We got a few people here who are in person. And so if you are tuning in, welcome to you. Welcome to everybody who's here in person. And um, if you want to interact online, uh, number one, you can let us know that you are with us by just uh, putting a comment into the comment section of, of our stream. But then also you can interact. You can ask questions or you can make comments as we're going. You're invited to do so. So that is an option that's available to you as well. And then here, just so you know, you might be saying, how are we gonna do this in COVID when we got people here in person? Well, we got a, we got a handheld mic. We will be cleaning it off in between people and letting them ask questions. Uh, being that this is not a Van Halen concert, I don't anticipate anyone putting it like right up to their lips. So we're keep, <laughs> keeping everybody safe <laughs> and we'll be able to rock and roll. So if you're, if you're thinking, hey, how does that happen? We are, we're COVID safe and, and uh, Todd and I are distance. And, uh, and then um, you'll see him, you'll see Todd, he's got his mask on. Of course, I don't while I'm talking. And so we are really uh, working to keep it safe here. But in any event, uh, this is our first time uh, doing this. And we're looking to, this is uh, a prototype, uh, something that Todd has done individually with a group of people and uh, wanted to see if we could broaden it out a bit. So uh, we are going to be doing that today. And we're going to be drinking from a fire hydrant today with uh, the letter of James, uh, Jesus's little brother. Uh, if you if you had if you th could uh, sit down with Jesus's little brother and get a cup of coffee, would you do it? Would you do it? Would, you know, if he said, "Hey, let's go, let's go get a cup of coffee at Starbucks or your favorite coffee shop," he's buying. Would you do it? And what would you want to know from him? Well, of, of course, there's probably all kinds of questions that you would ask that. He didn't necessarily answer in his letter, but I would imagine that um, most, if not all, of what he wrote in his letter that he wrote to ancient Christians would be a good part of your conversation. And so we're going to be looking at this letter from Jesus' little brother, James, which is thought by, by some scholars to be the oldest book in the entire New Testament. And I, and I actually think that there's some truth to that. I think that's actually a, 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 good, a good guess. And it's, a, it's James, of course, is the brother of Jesus, obviously Jewish. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because uh, this is a very Jewish letter and has a, has, a, has a structure to it. And at times it could be easy to miss the structure because he's writing in a way that's very different from, let's say, Paul the Apostle or uh, very, a, a way that's very different from, um, from, let's say, the writer of the book of Hebrews that have these arguments that are highly structured and you know where they're going. They give you kind of a thesis statement for each, each section. James doesn't, he's not that obvious. Uh, you have to figure out where he's going. And some people think it's rather haphazard. So he's often, it's often called uh, the book of Proverbs for the New Testament or, or Proverbs of the New Testament. Because if you look at Proverbs, sometimes we think Proverbs is haphazard. It feels that way because you got these different sayings that are, that are just random. They're great but they don't seem like they're organized. Well, actually, Book of Proverbs, believe it or not, is organized into sections. And James actually is organized in a way. And I'm sure people would differ in terms of the way they might do that. That's fine. Uh, but there, there, are some, some, there is some consensus as to some of the things that James is doing. So we're going to be looking at James in some pretty big chunks. It's going to be a little bit different from the way in which your normal devotional would go. Uh, we all use some kind of devotional at some point in time to help us to get into God's Word. Well, you know, and usually if you're doing that daily, you have these bits and pieces, you know, five verses here, seven verses there per day, and that's just fine. And there's, not only is there nothing wrong with that, there's something wonderful about that. If you're doing that, rock and roll. We're just in a different mode for our time where we're doing what I call a flyover or drink from the fire hydrant where we're going to be looking at big chunks at a time to come up with some, some big themes that we're looking at. So we're not going to be verse by verse. There's all kinds of things that you're going to see 
that you're going to say, wait, 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 you know, and that's okay. That's actually good because I hope that deepens our time. There, there are all kinds of things that, that you're going to run into. There are particular words, there's phrases, there's sections of three, four, five verses that you're going to want to camp out on, and that's great. Please keep camping out on it. But what we're going to be doing is taking a bird's eye view of the book of James, and uh, hopefully it'll enrich our time because sometimes um, taking a bird's eye view gives you a, a really good sense of how some things are connected, whereas when we're doing it day by day and we're taking little sections, there are bigger connections that are easy to miss. And, you know, and, that, and again, that's okay. I'm not putting down section by section devotionals. I do them too, all right? But we're in a different mode today. So we're going to be looking at James. Uh, this is the letter from Jesus' little brother. And I remember James, brother of Jesus, and also a doubter. Uh, James, along with the rest of Jesus' family, had significant doubts about who he was and what he was doing in his ministry. And uh, James only became a disciple of Jesus after the resurrection, right? And so, but before that, he was a bit of a skeptic. And it's got to be tough growing up in the shadow of Jesus. So, um, so he got past that and ultimately became a pillar in the church. He was widely known as a man of deep prayer and a man of very deep spirituality. And he was ultimately martyred. He was executed. Um, so he, he died a martyr uh, in, the, in, in the first century as a Christian. And, he, and you read the book of Acts, you see James pop up here and there as a clear leader of the church, especially the church of Jerusalem. The context for this letter is you have some Jewish Christians, and it's pretty clear from reading the letter that they are Jewish, some Jewish Christians who were on the run from what's probably the very first wave of persecution of the early church. Saying that there was persecution doesn't mean that everybody and their mom was persecuting Christians all the time. Uh, usually uh, persecution was usually intermittent, which means it usually was happening in bits and pieces here and there. Uh, it was rare to have, let's say, total persecution of Christians across a big section of geography, uh, which is not to minimize the reality of persecution. I'm sure that people undergoing it weren't thinking, oh, well, it's just a little bit. I'm sure everybody else is having an easy time. I'm not trying to minimize that, but I am trying to contextualize it. And there is a wave of persecution of some sort that um, seems to have come out of Jerusalem. And you have Christians who are on the run. It's one of the things that tells us that this is pretty early, is that to be in that, in, in that early wave of persecution of Christians from Jerusalem means that this goes back to a time when Christians had uh, a large presence in, uh, in Jerusalem. And, they, and you definitely you'll see that uh, folks have run and they've scattered. He starts out the letter, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. You see that, and there's an echo there in that last bit, the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. And you look at that, and you're like, wait a minute, am I reading Old Testament or New Testament? It's because to refer to Christians as the 12 tribes Right? Well, you know, in the Old Testament, there's 12 tribes uh, that constitute Israel, right? 12 historic tribes that, that constitute uh, the nation of Israel. Where here's a guy using that language and talking about Christians and saying they're scattered among the nations, or some of your translations will rightly say the Gentiles. And that tells us a whole lot right there. Number one, it's a very Jewish flavor, and that makes sense. James is Jewish. But that would also make sense only to people who were also Jewish, right? That would make sense to people who were, who were Jewish folks themselves. And then this notion of scattered among the nations. More than like, it would be really weird to, to write that, something like that, to people who were Gentile. Um, he's writing that kind of language actually to, talk, to basically evoke a sense of the exile that happened in the Old Testament. What happened in the Old Testament two times? Israel was exiled. Uh, first, you had uh, the northern kingdom that went into exile because of uh, Assyria took them over and literally scattered them to the point where they're still to this day called the Ten Lost Tribes, right? And then you have the, the kingdom of Judah, 
which also was ultimately scattered by Babylon, even though they did come back together after uh, 70 years, but they were still scattered among the nations. That kind of language tells us we're dealing with something pretty Jewish. And, and you look at it, the New Testament, a lo in a lot of instances, a lot of instances, I wouldn't say this is an absolute rule, but uh, it's a pretty good one. It's that uh, if it's Jewish, it's, it's early. If it's Jewish, it's old. Because we know that Christianity became really Gentile really quickly. And you even read that in the New Testament itself. It took off among the Gentiles more than it did among God's own people, uh, the nation of Israel. And so if you're looking at something that has a really Jewish feel to it, it means it's probably pretty old. And James works like that. It's got echoes of things like the Sermon on the Mount. It's got echoes of things like the book of Proverbs. And, uh, and it does not have, it has a developed kind of theology, but not the way that, let's say, uh, the P Paul's letters do. It doesn't have a developed theology the way that the book of Hebrews does or something like that, or even the, the, the letters of Peter or the letters of John. It, it, it's very young, as if people were still thinking about all the stuff that would ultimately become Christian theology. It's, it, it has a sense of that. So many people ca categorize it as something pretty early. There's all other kinds of scholarly stuff that, that we could talk about with that, but that's not uh, exactly why we're here. But I wanted to give you a sense of the flavor. So that's what we have. We have James, uh, a very early letter, maybe the oldest thing in the, in the New Testament, from Jesus' little brother who was a devout man of God, started out as a skeptic, became a believer after the resurrection. All right, so we're going to read in some sections that are, um, you'll, the sections we'll take will be kind of a, a bit unfamiliar at times. You'll be reading your Bible. Hopefully you got your Bible. Please break it out, whether it's if, if, you're, if you're with us uh, on the stream Go ahead and, you know, do so, if you do it on your Bible online or if you uh, have a program, whip that out. Or if you just, you're old school and you go analog instead of digital, we got you. Uh, and then also in person as well, please follow with, your, with the scriptures. The Bible translators and people who put the scriptures together, they give you headings to help you, right? They're, they're really trying to help you, and those are very helpful um, to help us read scripture. And the headings you did not, are not original to the text. But um, those, we're going to break through some of those headings, and we'll be making our own groupings as we go. And uh, so, you know, just gear up for that, that we won't be operating just according to the headings. So we'll be reading big old chunks of Scripture, and I think that's really cool because it, uh, it helps us uh, not just to get the visual of reading, but also to hear what we're reading. And we're going to be operating today from the uh, New International Version, um, if you have something else, we invite you to rock and roll with something else. Just want to let you know, you know, we have, we have to read from something. So we will be reading from that translation from the NIV, and, uh, but we welcome you to join in with some others. And if there's some insight to something like that that you glean where you see there's a difference, go ahead and let us know. That's, it's always great to compare. All right, let's start out in a word of prayer, though, before we get going, and then we're going to rock and roll. <laughs> Lord, it's your time. It's your day. And uh, you have given us uh, this day, Lord. You have uh, seen fit to wake us up, put us in our right minds, and uh, to guide us into living a life that glorifies you. We do ask you uh, uh, to be with us as we enter into this time in your word. Uh, we, we need you, Lord, and we need you to speak to us and through us as a community, uh, both in person and, um, and, and digitally. Uh, please be with us and help us to uh, grab onto the treasures of your word to have them embedded in our hearts, and to walk this out uh, for our own sake, for the sake of uh, your church in the world, and for the sake of uh, a world that needs you desperately. And um, please be with us. In the name of Jesus, we consecrate this time. It's yours. Amen. <clears throat> 